dear students, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the sixth program on Software Engineering 1 course. Software engineers are called upon to solve problems which are generally very complex in nature. If the system is new and there is no existing system that can help understand the problem, then it is very difficult to establish what services the system should provide and the constraints under which it should operate. In today's program, we look at the process that can be used to establish system requirements. Today, we will explain why requirements should be written at different levels. We'll discuss different classes of requirements. We'll introduce to you the requirement engineering process and we'll explain what is involved in validating system requirements. Let's start by defining what do we precisely mean by a system requirement. The requirements are defined as, requirements are description of services that a system should provide and constraints under which the system should be designed, developed, and work. Unfortunately, the term requirements is not used in a consistent manner in the industry. For some people, a requirement is just an abstract statement of a service that a system should provide or a constraint under which the system should operate. Others see requirements as a formal and detailed description of a system function. And for some people, requirements are detailed descriptions written in a formal way that can be used by the system developers to develop the system. Therefore, to minimize confusion and to make a clear separation between different views on what is a requirement, we'll use three different terms with precise meanings. The terms that we will use in our course are requirements definition, which mean a statement written in a natural language plus some diagrams of the services the system should provide and its operational constraints. For example, for a word processing software, the requirement definition can be the software should provide a facility to save a file in different formats. This is a very precise statement of a service that the software should provide. We'll use the term requirement specification. By requirement specification, we mean a structured document setting out detailed descriptions of the system services. And the third term that we will use is the software specification, which is a detailed software description which can serve as a basis for a design or implementation. The difference in these three level of definition is basically the details or the amount of detail we put in each statement. At the requirement definition step, we write a definition in a very abstract way. It's just a statement written in natural language. At the requirement specification, we write the same requirement in much more detail. At, at the software specification level, we explain a requirement in such a detail that a software developer can take that statement, a description, and can implement the service. Writing requirement at different level is very useful because they provide information about the system to different types of user. For example, the requirement definition are basically written for client managers, system end users, client engineers, contractor managers, and system architects, whereas 
requirements, specification are written for system end users, client engineers, system architect, and software developers. And the software specification is of the interest for client engineers, system architects, and software developers. As you can see from this diagram, that different types of people might use different level of requirements. For example, an end user might need to read the requirement definition at an early stage to know what are the functionalities of the software. But an experienced user might be interested to know a little more about the services the software provides and how those services are really being implemented. Dear students, a system generally has three different types of requirements. These are the functional requirements, which are the statements of services the system should provide and how the system should react to particular inputs and how the system should behave in particular situation. We already gave you one example of function requirement for reward processing software, which is the software should provide a facility to save a file. Another could be the system should provide a facility to the user to open a file. In the context of a library information system, a requirement can be the system should provide a facility to search the catalog. The second type of requirements are non-functional requirements, which are the constraints on the services or the functions offered by the system. Non-functional requirements can be classified broadly in three different categories, as you can see in this diagram. Non-functional requirements are categorized into product requirements, organizational requirements, and external requirements. Under product requirements, we have the usability requirement that a user should be able to learn the functionality of the system after training of two weeks. Efficiency requirements, reliability requirements, for example, the system should have a reliability not less than 0 0.9. Portability requirement, which, which means that the software should be portable from one machine to another machine where we have to specify the machines precisely in our requirements. Under the efficiency requirement, we might have the performance requirement. That means the software should send two kilobytes per second, and the space requirement, which can also be the size of the software. One example could be the size of the software should not be more than one megabyte. Under the organizational requirements, we have the delivery requirement. One example could be the software should be developed and delivered to the customer within three months. We have the implementation requirements, which might be that the software should be developed using a specific package, for example, or the product should be developed using some specific process model. And we have the standard requirements, which might be defined by the organization. One of the standard requirements could be the documentation should be provided in a standard format, and that standard has been defined by that organization or by some standardization agency. External requirements are interoperability requirement. That means the software should be able to work with the existing software. And then we have the ethics requirement under which it's possible that we should say that software should not allow the user of an illegal copy or the privacy requirements, 
the software should not allow a user to see the person information of somebody he is not allowed to see. And we have the safety requirements, which are very important for the safety critical systems. Therefore, the non-function requirements are very critical in the success of a product. We don't just have to mention what the functionalities a software should provide, but the constraints are equally important. If you develop a software, we satisfy all the requirements, but it does not satisfy some of the function requirement, for example, the efficiency requirement, or it doesn't, or it has not been developed according to the specified standard, that software might not be accepted by the customer. The third type of requirements are the domain requirements. These are the requirements that come from application domain of the system. For example, if you are developing a software for a library, then the domain requirement could be due to the copyright protection, once a document is loaded, it should be immediately removed from the system. Dear students, the domain requirements can be functional as well as non-functional, but there is one very important point to note. Sometimes a non-functional requirement could become a functional requirement. In the case of authorization control, which says that software should not allow an unauthorized user to access some information. At this level, this is defined as a non-functional requirement. But it has to be implemented. The system has to validate, for example, the password. And in that case, that non-functional requirement becomes a functional requirement. Dear students, large software systems are usually developed to address very complex problems. This makes the formulation of requirement, whether they are function requirements, non-function requirements, or domain requirements, a very difficult undertaking. However, a suitable and well-disciplined approach can help to better understand the problem and consequently system requirements. Therefore, we must be using a very well-defined process which can help us to discover the requirements of a system, whether they are function requirements or they are non-function requirements. A well-defined technique provides us with a set of activities that is used to discover, analyze, and validate system requirements. The processes which are used are enormous. They depend on the application domain, the people involved, and the organizations developing the requirements. Different organizations use different processes. However, there are a number of generic activities which are common to all the processes. These common activities are requirements, elicitation, and analysis, requirements specification, requirements validation, and requirements management. These are the four basic activities which have to be carried out during this phase. A useful requirement engineering process is shown in this diagram. The requirement engineering process might start with a feasibility study. It has the requirements analysis and elicitation phase, requirement specification phase, and requirements validation phase. The feasibility study is an optional. And the outcome of the feasibility study is a feasibility report. In the feasibility study, it is the work of the analyst to find out that it's worthwhile to develop that system. It is a very short and well-focused study that checks if the system contributes towards achieving the overall organizational objectives, 
if the system can be engineered using current technology and within budget, that's the cost expense analysis. And if the system can be integrated with other system that are used. So during the feasibility study, we have to look at the three important aspects. We have to look at the economic feasibility of the system. We have to look at the, we have to look at the operational feasibility of the system. And we have to look at the technological feasibility of the system. Once we find that a software is feasible to develop, then we can move to the next phase, which is the requirements analysis and elicitation phase. As I explained before, feasibility study is an optional if it has already been decided that the development should start immediately and if this system has a value for the organization, then of course the feasibility study can be left out and we can start directly from the requirements analysis phase. The requirement analysis and elicitation phase is concerned with understanding the customer requirements for a software system. It involves technical staff working with customer to find out about the application domain, the services that this system should provide, and the system operational constraints, the non-function requirements. It may involve end users, managers, engineers, involved in maintenance and domain experts working together to come up with a set of requirements. All these people, they are generally called the stakeholders. So stakeholder is anybody who is going to use the system directly or indirectly, and anybody who will be affected by that system. So during this phase, we have to make sure that we get the opinion and the requirement of all these stakeholders so that a successful and acceptable software system can be developed. However, there are a number of problems we may face during requirement elicitation. And one has to be very careful and the system engineer and the system analyst has to be ready and has a plan to tackle those problems. Some of the problems might be the stakeholder might not know what they really want from the system and that's very common. Sometimes you are called upon to develop a software. You go to them and ask, okay, tell us what really the software should be doing. And they might give you some very brief statements. They might not be knowing all the requirements in detail. Therefore, as a system analyst, it's your responsibility to use different methods and techniques and tools to acquire all the requirements. Of course, the prototyping can also help you there. You can also talk to the user frequently and give your ideas and then come up with a set of requirements. Another problem which you can face is the stakeholder might give you the requirements in their own terms. That creates a lot of confusion. We know that we use different terminologies in different subjects with different meanings. So the stakeholder might be telling you one thing and you might take a different meaning out of it. Therefore, there is a need that we should keep talking to these stakeholders. We should keep clarifying whatever they say and whatever we understand so that there is no confusion and there is no conflict there. Another problem you can find is that there might be the conflicts between the requirements. One person gives you one requirement and somebody else gives you a requirement which is quite in contradiction to the first requirement. If this is the case, then you have to talk to both parties, the stakeholders, so that you can come to a consensus. Some compromise in, in the requirement have to be made. Also, organizational and political factors may influence the system requirement. And the legislation itself can have an impact on the requirements. And above all, don't forget, the requirements keep changing. 
not the economists only, but the stakeholder may change if you are going to take a longer period of time to analyze the system. So we should be ready to tackle all these problems. We'll discuss the analysis phase in much more detail in some other program. Once you have got all these system requirements, the next phase is the software specification. The software specification phase is the phase during which we elaborate the requirements definition. Let's see with the help of an example. We define one requirement for word processing software that it should provide a facility to the user to save a file. That's what we call this is a requirement definition. During the requirement, once you have got all these system requirements, the next phase is the software specification. The software specification phase is the phase during which we elaborate the requirements definition. Let's see with the help of an example. We define one requirement for word processing software that it should provide a facility to the user to save a file. That's what we call this is a requirement definition. During the requirement specification, we have to elaborate it. We have to put a little more detail there. The detail could be if the user wants to save a file, then the system should allow the user to specify the file name and the directory on which the file should be saved. If the file is a new file, then the system should allow the user to specify the drive, the name of the file, and the directory in which the file should be saved. If the file already exists, then the new file should replace and override the contents of the old version of the file. So that's what we mean by specification, giving little more detail about the, that requirement. We should write all the requirements very precisely in much detail, because this is the requirements from which we will design the system and ultimately we will develop the system. If the requirements have not been written precisely, if the requirements have not been written in detail, you cannot expect a good working software. Once all the requirements have been written in detail, then we move to the requirements validation phase. In the requirements validation phase, we demonstrate that the requirements define the system that the customer really wants. Of course, we already said there might be a lot of confusion when you are talking to the, to the stakeholders. So we must make sure that whatever requirements have been written, they have been written correctly, and that's really what the user wants from the system. Requirement validation is very important. Since fixing errors in requirements at a later stage is very expensive. For example, fixing a requirement error after delivery may cost up to 100 times the cost of fixing an implementation error. So it's always prudent and wise to make sure that requirements have been written very precisely, accurately, and there is no misunderstanding. There are several aspects of the requirements which must be checked during this phase. They are validity of the requirement, which means does the system provide the functions which best support the customer need? As we said before, there might be some conflicting requirements. In that case, we have to make the compromises to come up to non-conflicting requirements. Another check we have to perform is the consistency check. Consistency of the requirement means that whether requirements conflict with each other or not. For example, if one customer says to you that I like the blue background, 
and the second customer ask you, no, I like the back, I like the white background. Of course, you cannot provide both of them together at the same time. These two requirements cannot be satisfied at the same time unless you provide some customization facility to the user. But if you are sticking to a single design, then of course you have to make those people sit together and come to a consensus. You have to make sure the requirements do not conflict with each other because confi conflicting requirements cannot be implemented. Another check we have to perform is the completeness. Are all functions required by the customer included in our specification? That's what we'll be looking at. As we discussed before, getting all the user requirements is a very, very difficult task. Generally, customers don't know really what, what the functions they want from the software. They might have some idea. In some cases, they just tell you the, we want an inventory control system. What that system should really be doing? They say, go and explore it yourself. So we have to make sure that all the requirements have been written and elaborated in our requirement definition and requirement specification. If our requirements are not complete, we cannot have an acceptable and a high quality product. Another check we have to perform is the realism. Can the requirements be implemented given available budget and technology? If a customer asks you that write a software which can instruct somebody to bring me a cup of tea, can this requirement be implemented whatever technology we have and whatever budget we have been given? That's we have to see that all the requirements are realistic. They can be implemented within budget and whatever technology is on our disposal. There are a number of techniques that can be used to validate requirements. Some of the techniques are requirements reviews, prototyping, which is very useful, and automatic consistency analysis. Automatic consistency analysis can be performed if the requirements are written in a precise mathematical manner. Then we have the software available to us which can check the requirements for their consistency. Automatic validation can be done if the requirements are written in a precise manner in some mathematical form, as can be seen in this diagram. The requirements are written in a formal language. Then we use requirement processor which processes the requirements and saves the requirements into a database. Then we use another kind of software which can analyze the software and give us the problems, inconsistency problems in the requirements. And then that report can be used to redefine the requirements. Dear students, in today's program, we discussed that, that the software can have three different types of requirements, the function requirements, the non-function requirements, and the domain requirements. We discussed that getting the user requirements is a very complicated process. Therefore, we should use a well-defined process that can help us identify the requirements. With this, we come to the end of this program. Till the next program, Allah Hafiz.